Hello students, this is Narayan Kumar Devedi uh, starting today's lecture with electric potential at a general point due to dipole. As we have in the previous lecture, the electric potential at a point on the axial position of the dipole and later on in the equatorial position. What if the test point is not is neither given at axial position nor it is at equatorial position. So under that condition, how do we calculate electric potential that we will be learning under this topic. So let's begin. Suppose we have short dipole uh, comprising two equal auxiliary charge charges. Uh, say this is plus Q charge and this we say minus Q charge and let me call these points to be A and B this is mid of the dipole now from this midpoint let we have a general point uh, P distant small r from the mid of the dipole and let we have the distance of this uh, minus Q charge from this point or distance of this point from minus Q charge let we call this to be R1 and uh, later on this uh, let we just call it R2 and this will be called R1 so this is actually R1 now what do we do uh, here actually the length of the, the dipole is being taken as 2a 2a so here actually we will be writing the potential due to this minus q charge at p and then electric potential due to that plus q charge at p and applying principle of superposition the total potential will be calculated at p so let's proceed now the electric potential potential at P due to minus Q charge let me call it to be uh, let me first calculate by due to this plus Q charge and we call it as B1 which is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught charge upon distance that's R1 and uh, the same the potential at P due to minus Q charge we are having this V2 equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught charge upon distance what's the distance of this point from this it's R2 now we just go for the calculation of uh, total potential so the potential at P due to the dipole V equal to V1 plus V2 and here we have common term Q by 4 pi epsilon naught so you just have it as common and later on this term will be plus and this will be with negative so you write now 1 upon R1 minus 1 upon R2 <coughs> thereby suppose now uh, our task is now to calculate the value of R1 and R2 so just uh, say this be equation number 1 as we will be proceeding for the calculation of values of R1 and R2 now for that what do we do we just drop a perpendicular right from this B point on this OP and let this point be say B dash let me call it B dash and just extend this line 
backward and drop a perpendicular from point A on this line. So that is A dash. Now, this actually R1 will be called just equal to B dash P. So here, uh, from the diagram, from the diagram, actually we have uh, R1 to be nearly equal to B dash P and that B dash P will be OP minus OB dash OP minus OB dash ok now let's calculate this OB dash OB dash let me call this angle to be theta so obviously this would also be theta so just having this right angle triangle with the, this much base and this is hypotenuse find out the cosine of this angle so this uh, OB dash will be equal to this uh, A half of dipole length times cos theta and this OP is small r so we directly write the value of this r1 to be uh, OP is actually r minus A cos theta find out this student ok so similarly in the same way you can have r2 nearly equal to this actually r2 will be equal to a dash p a dash p and this a dash p will be oa dash plus op so oa dash plus op and in the same way taking this right angle triangle with this uh, base and this hypotenuse and this perpendicular find out again cosine so that OA dash is will be A cos theta so you will be writing R for this and A cos theta for this so this will give you R plus A cos theta now placing these values of R1 and R2 back here and simplifying it now from equation 1 we have what do we have Potential V to be equal to Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught. It's 1 upon R minus A cos theta minus 1 upon R2 is what? R plus A cos theta. Now having the LCM now, Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught. LCM would be R square minus A square cos square theta. This goes here. R plus A cos theta minus this comes here plus A cos theta. So just simplifying it. You will be having 2A cos theta and that 2A into Q will make that will moment P. So finally you will be having here. 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught it's p upon r square minus a square cos square theta so this is the outcome now if say this test point is taken at far far off position in such a way that this r is much much greater than half of dipole length so this term can be neglected so here we write if P is such that such that its R is much much greater than A then therefore V now is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught P upon R square. Find this student. So this is the last outcome. Now we can have uh, actually here there is a mistake. Here cos theta would also be there. Because this is 2a cos theta and that 2a along with this q will make p but cos theta will remain as it is. So here also you make correction cos theta. Now we can go for the discussion points. 
So under discussion, we'll be discussing about the position of S point for equatorial as well as for axial condition. So for discussion, discussion under discussion, we can have first point. Say if P is at axial position that is for that theta would be either 0 that is theta equal to 0 or 180 so this will be the condition for axial position of test point so from this last outcome what do we get for the electrostatic potential it's 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught P cos 0 would be plus 1 and cos 180 would be minus 1. So you'll be having plus minus P here upon this R square. So this would be the electrostatic potential for the axial position of test point. We had earlier also the same result. Okay, now for the second case, if P is at equatorial position, then that is we have theta to be equal to 90 degree. So with this, if you just place cos 90, so cos 90 is 0, so this whole, this 0 will make this whole term to be 0. So, therefore, it implies V equal to 0. So, the same result we had in case of equatorial position of test point. Okay, so, so the next topic that we are taking now is equipotential surfaces. Actually, equipotential surfaces are nothing but these are the locus of all such points at which the potential is same due to the configuration of charges, point charges. So those, uh, that locus of all those such points having equal same amount of potential due to the configuration of charges will be called equipotential surfaces. Okay, so let's have a few important things about equipotential surface. So how do we write it? Uh, means uh, first point we write equipotential surface for a point charge for a point charge how do we just uh, draw equipotential surface or what is the shape of equipotential surface for a point charge that will we will be discussing here and there. so as we have this uh, since potential value we have due to this point charge 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught charge upon distance so this is the outcome that we have derived already now as can be seen this V is inversely proportional to R so around the point charge equipotential surface will be the concentric circular spheres circles so just draw that equipotential surface suppose this is an isolated single point charge and we are having here actually uh, these are equipotential surface surfaces around this point charge so let me just draw this uh, for the symmetry complete sphere so these are concentric circular lines the locus that I am drawing joining all such points equidistant from this point charge around it so those all are equipotential surfaces this now electric field lines obviously would be diverging coming out of this uh, 
so you can just now draw electric field lines as well so these are simply electric field lines like this okay so this is actually these are equipotential surfaces due to this point charge okay now for the second case we can have for second case for uniform electric field for uniform electric field in case of uniform electric field how the equipotential surfaces are drawn or what is the shape of equipotential surface that we will uh, discuss under this so suppose we have uniform electric field being represented by the, these parallel lines here these are lines representing uniform electric field so this is this one so here in this electric field equipotential surfaces will be just parallel planes like this first equipotential surface now here also you can have the second equipotential surface and here as well you can have another equipotential surface uh, like this like this these are equipotential surfaces Okay, fine. Okay, students. So, for the third point, what can we say? The surfaces of all kinds of conductors, whatsoever may be the shape of those conductors, are said to be the surfaces of equipotential. So, here you can write the surfaces of charged conductors charged conductors of any shape of any shape are equipotential surfaces equipotential surfaces now for the fourth case now what if we have dipole and for that dipole how do we plot or how do we uh, draw equipotential surface let's see for a dipole electric dipole so here suppose we have dipole comprising two equal but opposite charges now here we have a, a equipotential surface being drawn now in case of this dipole equipotential surfaces in case of dipole now what if we have fifth case for two point charges for two point 
charges. Now suppose we have two similar point charges plus plus and they are kept close to each other and in that case how do we plot equipotential surface? So let's see, I am just drawing. So here suppose we have this positive charge, another positive charge here. These are two positive charges placed close to each other. Now equipotential surfaces would be this dotted lines this now this again say first for second point charge concentric circles now here this one another concentric circle here also another concentric circle now the last circle covering this hole like this so this will be the uh, shape of equipotential surface in case of two point similar charges okay students so let's discuss now properties of equipotential surfaces what are uh, important properties that equipotential surfaces possess okay so let me write heading properties now under this we can see the work the work done to move a test charge from one point to another point on an equipotential surface is always zero it means no work is done in moving a charge from one place or from one point to another point on an equipotential surface so here we write no work is done in moving charge on such surfaces so let's see mathematically how it, it, it is possible since the potential difference between any two points A and B on equipotential surface is written to be work done between those two points per unit test charge Q0. Find that is now equipotential surface is the surface over which the potential is same at all points on it. So here we say but VA is equal to VB therefore this term will become 0 and cross multiplying we have WAB to be 0 so this way we can mathematically say now for the second point we can say the electric field lines are always perpendicular to the equipotential surfaces whatsoever may be the shape of surface so here we write electric field lines are perpendicular on such surfaces. Find this. Actually, here actually we can see if electric field lines are not perpendicular at any point on the equipotential surface then if we say it is inclined at some angle so when we resolve that suppose our diagram wise we can explain it suppose this is our equipotential surface due to the charge and say this uh, plus Q uh, let me just make it a complete circle this one okay now at this point 
if electric field line is not considered to be perpendicular say it is inclined with certain angle so obviously when we have resolution of this a component along this tangent would be e cos theta and a component perpendicular to this would be e sin theta so obviously due to this component there will be a work done in moving the charge along this and we all know at any point on this surface to move the charge this charge from this point to another point the work done is found to be zero so no work is done that implies this component will have zero value so hence we can say the electric field lines are always perpendicular unlike electric field lines these equipotential surfaces also cannot intersect each other so to equipotential surfaces surfaces cannot intersect each other now oh, is it clear so here uh, you can just uh, reason it that as electric field lines never intersect each other so does the equipotential surfaces also so for the next fourth number property we can say the electric field lines uh, the uh, means electric uh, equipotential surfaces are crowded in the region of strong electric field or you can say the crowdedness of equipotential surfaces indicate the region of strong electric field so here we can write the surfaces indicate these uh, surfaces indicate the regions of strong strong electric fields strong or weak you can say weak electric fields find this let's have mathematical uh, expression supporting this statement since we have e equals to minus dv upon dr as can be seen for this constant dv as on equipotential surface we have this uh, difference in potential between any two points to be fixed constant so in that case e is inversely proportional to dr here actually negative sign indicates with increase in r this v decreases or v is opposite of this so for fixed dv we have e proportional to 1 by dr now as we have this to be strong electric field uh, stronger having more value dr will be quite small that means the spacing separation between equipotential surfaces in the region of stronger electric field will be less means equipotential surfaces will be crowded in that strong electric field region okay students so let's have next topic electric potential energy of a system of point charges actually electric potential energy is nothing but it is the amount of work done in bringing 
द असेंबली ऑफ पॉइंट चार्जेस टू अ सर्टेन पॉइंट फ्रॉम इन्फिनिटी इन साइड द इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फील्ड सो दैट्स कॉल्ड इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ अ सिस्टम ऑफ पॉइंट चार्जेस सो हेयर एक्चुअली विल बी कैलकुलेटिंग फॉर टू पॉइंट चार्जेस later on for three point charges and subsequently generalizing the case for n point charges so let's proceed so first we are calculating for system for system of two point charges okay so let me just draw the diagram first say we have 3d coordinate 3d rectangle coordinate system x y z now this is the origin now suppose with reference to this origin the point charge q1 is taken having position vector r1 and the next point charge q2 is taken having position vector r2 with reference to that same origin now the separation between these two is say r1 2 now here how do we, we how do we i be proceeding here let me just brief that <coughs> that actually for this q1 charge when this uh, space is empty in that empty space this q1 charge will be brought from infinite distance at this point r1 so as we have no electric field existing so there won't be any kind of work done in establishing establishing this q1 at r1 distance now this q1 charge will create its own electric electrostatic field and in that electrostatic field now the charge q2 is being brought from infinity to r2 so obviously there will be a work done so that work done will be the electrostatic potential energy so here the electrostatic potential at position r2 will be written due to this q1 as this will create its own electric electrostatic field so i am just starting now the potential the potential at position r2 due to this q1 charge is v1 equal to how do we write putting electrostatic potential charge upon distance Along with in multiple one upon four pi epsilon not a constant term q one upon distance is what r one two. So this is the potential. Now the q two charge when it's brought from infinity to r two, the work will be done and that work done will be equal to the test charge multiplied with the potential at that point. so now the work done work done on q2 is equal to q2 times v1 and now placing the value we have 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 upon r12 so this actually is our potential energy electrostatic potential energy so this we can write it to be u finally now we can have the same for system of three point charges now here actually suppose here we can go for system of three charges system of three charges suppose we have three point charges 
namely q1 then uh, here it is q2 and finally here we have q3 so with reference to some origin q1 will have position vector r1 this will have r2 this will have r3 position vector so this uh, distance from q1 of q3 would be written r13 and distance of this two will uh, uh, from q1 will be written as r12 and distance of that q3 from q2 will be written as r23 see q1 is brought from infinity in empty space so there won't be any kind of potential in kind of electrostatic field previously existing so there won't be any work done now this q1 will create its own electrostatic field so in that field q2 will be brought and that q2 uh, will be writing the potential electrostatic potential at q2 due to this q1 and later on the work done will be calculated now there are two electrostatic fields q1 and q2 will have their own electrostatic field and in that mutual field q3 is being brought so another work done will be seen so let's proceed here uh, the work done on q2 so let me call it w1 so which is equals to q2 into v1 at position of we are writing r2 okay here actually we are having potential electrostatic potential so this uh, v1 would be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 upon what's the distance so this from this one r12 similarly we can have for this q3 now in a similar way you can write the potential the potential at r13 means due to this what is the potential at this point first i am writing potential at r13 due to uh due to this q1 and uh, q2 so here actually this will create its own potential this will also create its own potential as we have two mutual electrostatic field okay so the electrostatic potential will be let we call that to be v12 which is equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught now source charge is q1 upon the resistance is r13 plus due to this q2 upon distance is r23 now at this potential q3 is being brought from infinity so let's calculate the work done okay now the work done work done on q3 let we call it to be w2 so this would be q3 into v12 now just placing the value of v12 here back we have 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught it is q1 this q3 in multiple upon r13 plus q2 now this q3 upon this r23 now to have the total electro electric potential energy of this configuration of three charges we can now calculate total work done and that will be actually the electric potential energy so the total work done total work done w equals to w1 plus w2 
just placing now the values uh, it's 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught a common term and inside q1 q2 upon r12 q1 q2 upon r12 plus these two terms q1 q3 upon r13 plus q2 q3 upon r23 so this actually will be the electro electric potential energy okay students so let's have the third generalization in case of n number of point charges what is the electric potential energy let's proceed uh, so i must write third in number for n uh, charges point charges so let we once again have three dimensional rectangular coordinate system origin y x suppose here we have q1 charge having position vector as say r1 now another charge q2 having position vector as R2 now this is basically R2 minus R1 when we have mod of it this will be the distance between these two now say we have third point charge Q3 with position vector say R3 and the last n point charge with position vector as Rn. Okay, fine. Now, see, as we have no previously existing electrostatic field, and in that empty space Q1 charge will be brought, so there won't be any work done. And as we have discussed earlier, now in the electrostatic field of this Q1, Q2 charge will be brought. So obviously at this point R2, there will be an electrostatic potential due to this Q1. Now the work will be done when Q2 charge is brought from infinity to this R2 position. That will be written. Now there will be two fields, field of Q1 and Q2 and in that Q3 will be brought, so there will, will be work done. Now, subsequently go, proceeding in the same way, the electrostatic fields would be increasing and there will be successively work done. So, let's have start of this uh, expression. So, we are proceeding first writing the potential at this position. Potential at R2 due to Q1 is V1 equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught charge upon what's the distance? It's mod of R2 minus R1 vector R2 minus vector R1 mod. Now the work done in establishing Q2 so, the work required, work required for R, for Q2 at R2. So, this W2 we are calling it, it will be V1 into Q2. And now just placing this value back here. We have 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught that Q1 Q2 upon mod of R2 minus R1. Similarly, now the potential will be written due to this Q1 and Q2 at this point. So the potential, potential at R3 due to Q1 and Q2 let me call it V2 uh, V12 we must call it 
v one two, which is equals to uh, one upon four pi epsilon naught, will be a common term, and thereafter it will be q one charge upon mod of r three minus r one plus q two upon mod of r three minus r two. So this would be actually the potential. Now the work done in bringing from infinity, uh, in bringing Q3 charge from infinity to this R3 position, we can go for. Now the work done, work done for Q3. Uh, let me call it to be W3, which is equals to. Q three times v one two. So now just placing these values one upon four pi epsilon naught. Q one Q three upon mod of r three minus r one plus Q two Q three upon mod of r three minus r two. So. So this is actually the third work done. Now let's generalize the case. Proceeding in the same way. Proceeding in similar way, we can write W n to be equal to one upon four pi. That's the not. It's a q one q n upon r n minus r one plus q two q n upon mod of r n minus r two. Plus q three q n upon mod of r n minus r three plus q n minus one q n upon mod of r n minus r n minus one. So this is the work done. Okay, now let's have the total work done. Total work done. W will be equals to W two plus W three plus this this W n, and this was written to be uh, as there will be doubling of terms. So I'm just dividing it by half. So this would be. One by two, one upon four pi epsilon naught. Summation over I equal to one to n. Summation over j equal to one to n. When I is not equal to j, q pi q j upon mod of R j minus mod. Uh, vector r r so this would be the last outcome and this will be the electric potential energy of a system of n point charges so let me just write it by u okay soon so let's have next topic electric potential energy of a system of point charges in an external field So, what's the difference between previous and this topic? Earlier we had the same topic, but in empty space, there was not previously existing electric field as such. And here, in the external electric field, we will be bringing first charge, second charge, third charge, nth charge, and What's the electric potential in such configuration? That will be seen under this topic. So let's proceed. First, we calculate electric potential energy of single point charge. 
So first we write for a single charge. As we have already existing external electric field, so obviously at certain point in that electrostatic field there will be an electric potential and that potential will be first written when the first charge you will say is brought from infinity to that point the, elect, uh, the work done will be written to be the charge times potential at that point and that work done will be the electric potential <coughs> so let's proceed so here we write the potential due to external electric field electric field at say R position is say it is a V Uh, let me call this to be V function of R. Now, at this potential, we are bringing uh, from infinity a charge say Q. So the work done. Now the work done uh, that is potential energy electric potential energy uh, is equal to Q times V function of R at R. So this will this will be the simply electric potential energy due to a single charge. Let's have this for two charges. So, here actually we have four two point charges. For two point charges, we are having this. So, here actually the first work done will remain same. Now, there will be two fields the external electric field and this charge which has uh, been brought from infinity to a point say R that will create its own field and in that mutual field the next charge will be brought so another work will be done so let's proceed W1 I am directly writing Q1 V at R1 now W2 when the second charge is brought in the electrostatic mutual electrostatic field so the work done will be equals to Q2 second charge times the potential at that point plus the electric potential due to this Q1 charge at that point times this second charge so it is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 upon R12. Fine with this? Okay, now we can just have the addition to have the total work done, and that will be electric potential energy. So the total work done, total work done. W equal to W1 plus W2. And this will give us Q1 into V function of R1 plus Q2 into V at R2 plus 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 upon R12 
and this amount of work done is nothing but what electric potential energy so let's we call it u so students with this we end up today's lecture so do like and subscribe to the channel